in the year since the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, students and families have not only been mourning the lives of those uh, who were lost in that shooting, but many are also fighting for widespread changes to gun legislation. 17 students and staff members were killed in that shooting that took place a year ago today. That is a third of the 56 school shooting deaths in 2018, the deadliest year on record for that front. Cal Kashev is a survivor of Parkland school shootings. He's also a high school director of Turning Point USA, which is a conservative nonprofit organization, and he is with us now from Miami. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. So, so you know this by now. A lot of your classmates have called for some tougher gun laws, but you disagree. So explain to us uh, what you disagree uh, with them on and where you're coming from, what your perspective is. Look, I'm really here. I want to say one thing, and it's that. It's that one year ago, 17 kids were killed in that school. And nothing has changed security-wise. The school is still unsafe, and the school board members and the superintendent, who are a large part responsible for the shooting occurring, have still not been held accountable. The people who were killed there could have been your brother, your sister, your daughter, your husband. This affects all of us. And we need to hold our government officials accountable. Look, the gun control debate has yielded fruitless for both sides. But there's 80% of the things that we agree upon that we need to focus on. Securing our schools, mental health, making sure that those who failed us are held accountable. It's time to fix it. And it starts with firing the superintendent and holding our school board members accountable for their incompetence. So That's you know, all I'm here. You know, Kyle, that uh, when we talk about the kids who have organized March for Our Lives, a lot of their focus has been, and, and, and they certainly focus on mental health and stuff like that, but a lot of their focus has been on changing laws in regards to access to guns on the state level, background checks, limiting sort of the age limit when you, when you could buy a gun. Is that part of the conversation for you as well? Look, I very much disagree with policy there because there, it hasn't shown that it's actually had any success, those policies. But, but even though I disagree with them, what I can understand is I'm taking a pragmatic approach, and I've stayed through this, is that there are things that we agree upon that we need to focus on. There are immediate things that we need to do, that we all agree upon, and it's time to do it. Because in reality, we need to fix this. We really do. And, and it's a, it's, honestly, it's been a year, and nothing much has changed in Parkland at all. Uh, the school really isn't safe. They don't check bags. Uh, it's entirely unsecure as it was the day of. And it's been a year. And we've had all this media attention, and nothing has changed. And it's sad. It's time to change it. So, so wait a minute. I, I, just, I, I have a quick question, Kyle. You, you said that you blame the school and the school administrators, but you, do you not blame Nicholas Cruz? Yep. First of all, I don't appreciate you using his name in the slightest. I think it gives notoriety, and that actually spurs more shootings. Um, so there's, there's blame. Look, a large part of this is that the school board allowed this to occur. Uh, they created policies that allowed this to continue to occur. And back to what you said his name, by saying his name on air, it actually perpetuates this further. Uh, and I think both sides of the aisle agree that it's actually extremely hurtful uh, to continue using the name and be much better off to say the names of the 17 and give the notoriety to the people who deserve it, like Coach Aaron Feist, who, 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 who gave his life to save, uh, to save us. So, you know, after the shooting, there was sort of a commission to take a good hard look at what can be done at the school. And there were all sorts of suggestions being made about, you know, sort of uh, more police officers, more armed police officers in the school, or at least some sort of hybrid of a, a kind of security, a, an extra secu level of security, a person that would that would have been skilled in handling high school kids and, and carrying a gun. Um, it's much, it's difficult to get into that, to the school now. I mean, no, you can't just sort of walk off the street no, and get into not. the school. It's not so. Tell me, because I was under the impression that there had been a list of changes suggested. Were any of them implemented? There's been a lot of things suggested. Practically none of them have been implemented. You can still hop the fence. I, I can jump that, and I'm like five foot ten. Um, it's quite easy to jump that. The security hasn't increased. They don't check bags. The same thing could have happened right now. Uh, look, what happened at my school was that. Look, there are certain things that we can do to prevent this from happening and to create as much protection as possible. Uh, at the end of the day, it's up to, uh, up to the school resource officer to act. And in our case, he was a coward. But it doesn't mean that school resource officers being armed is a bad thing. It's actually a very good thing. 
But look, there's been a lot of things suggested that will actually improve it, like increasing fencing uh, and making sure the school is hardened. And none of that has been implemented at all because the school board is horrendous. And so they're not acting as they should. Yeah, you mentioned a couple of things there, Kyle, that you would like to see implemented. What are some of the other things that you think that uh, the state and local governments can do, not just at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, but across the country to prevent these kinds of tragedies? Well, the first thing is we can do is that we make sure we give the information properly and that the government actually acts on the air information given. There were 46 reports to the Broward Sheriff's Office, I call them cowards of Broward, uh, two tips to the FBI, and nothing was done when all the information was out there. Look, I, I want to return to this. It's that it's, the government needs to do its job. It really does. Uh, and specifically talking about Douglas, what we can do is we can, we can increase it and we can make it much more harder to get into the school. Uh, we, can, we can make the fence much higher. We can make sure that there's a single point entry. We can make sure that there are people ready on campus to act in case this happens. It's, it's an interesting perspective, um, and, and Kyle, I, I, I'm curious because um, yours is not a voice that we often hear, and that's why we're so happy that you were able to join us here on CBS and to talk about your perspective. Um, how is it in dealing with some of the your classmates, your former classmates, who have a difference of opinion um, with how things should go forward uh, across this country? So, yeah, I mean, while I disagree with them on policy, we still have the aim, the, the, look, while I disagree with them on policy, we still have the same end goal, uh, and that is making sure that what happened at my school last year, this day exactly, doesn't ever happen, ever again. Uh, so, look, but, but the thing is, we disagree on guns, but there are so many things in the middle that we agree upon. Like, uh, a few days ago, someone from the march tweeted, uh, making sure there'd be no notoriety, not giving the shooter, not saying his name, because that actually creates uh, more shootings. Um, so making sure that's another, that's another angle that we can all agree upon. Um, look, so what I'm focused right now is, is that 80% that we all agree upon. Uh, and that's really what's going to be the most effective, what actually can get passed through. Because look, we're at a 50-50. There's Democrats, there's Republicans, the Dems control the House, uh, we have the Senate. Um, so really no gun control bill is going to get passed or no pro-gun uh, bill is going to get passed. So let's focus on that thing in the middle that we can actually get past. So do you think, Kyle, it's really, it's refreshing to hear your perspective. And I wonder, uh, the fact that you say that you agree, you and your, um, your, your peers agree on almost 80% of the things that need to be done to fix uh, this issue. Do you think that you'd have a better chance of joining your forces together and approaching this to our legislators, to our elected officials, as opposed to coming at it from different sides of the aisle, if you will? That's what I wish we'd done in the beginning. That, that's, that's what I, when I first started, that's what I had wished we'd done. I wish the gun control debate hadn't become to such provenance and, and prominence and divided us. Uh, so I really wish we had focused on the things we agree upon, because those can actually get passed, those will get passed. I mean, back in March, we managed to get the Stop School Violence Act passed uh, with Senator Hatch, which was $2 billion for school safety, which was historic. Uh, so things like that, that actually, those, that makes a change, that makes a difference. Really Kyle, it takes all voices, all points of view. Um, this is a massive challenge for the country, and we really appreciate young people like you um, sharing your experiences and pushing for change in the way that you see is the best way. Kyle uh, Kashuf, thank you very much. Thanks, Kyle.